first tertiary care hospital that we had, field hospital. They had a CT scanner there. They neurolog sent them there with a neurology consult. The neurologist put them through the CT scanner. He had a normal CT, normal head CT, and basically a normal neurologic exam. I don't know that he asked him anything other than, you know, do you know today's date? I'm not sure the guy answered correctly even then, but he's, the guy sent it back to me, the neurologist sent it back with this rather scathing consult report, you know, with sort of a normal exam, and said, uh, clearly this man suffers from co uh, combat stress and you should treat him. And I'm sort of screaming at the piece of paper, I know he has combat stress, I'm going to treat him, but I don't know what's going on cognitively. Very frustrating. The guy had been right near several grenade blasts. He had a wall that got blown up, fall on his head, you know, where the bricks conked him on the head. It got to the point where he was, and if he heard an explosion, he'd pass out. He's sort of almost a Pavlovian reflex there. And then things started to change a little bit, and you know, and eventually I met him back the guy back to the States because I wasn't quite sure what to do with him. And he never, you know, was able to, to get functional. And I always wondered, what happened to that guy? Where did he go? Did he ever get better? You know, I wish I knew then what I know now. That was always a struggle for me. I went back to Iraq in 2006, redeployed again, and even then we were still struggling because by that time, that was the main, um, main weapon of choice for the insurgency, was the IED. That was the main way they fought. There were no prolonged